My name is Sydney and in today's video, I'm going to talk about some commonly asked questions I received on gauging how competitive you are as a medical school applicant. These are the toughest questions for me to answer, but I will try my absolute best to discuss stats such as your GPA and MCAT, extracurriculars and your specific story, and some general tips on how to proceed with the application to showcase you in the best light possible. As a disclaimer, I fully acknowledge that I do not have adcom insight my advice is solely based on my experience as well as some things that i assume adcom is looking for so i've listed some channels in my description of some of my favorite medical school youtubers that do have that adcom insight with all my videos i try my absolute best to not lead you guys astray please take what you will with a grain of salt without further ado let's get started Stats aren't everything, but they are important. While you're an undergrad, try your absolute best to do as well as you can. It is understandable if you experience hiccups along the way, such as the transition into college or in personal family matters. The main thing you should focus on, instead of dwelling on how you wish you would have done better in the past, is to try to do better now. Focusing on how you can pick yourself back up is what you can control and what ultimately matters most. As you figure out what clicks, your GBA trend, as well as the study habits that ADCOM will see, will reflect that. The question of what GPA or MCAT do I need is all relative. Relative because the stats that you have should reflect your application school list in a balanced ratio of target, reach, and safety schools. Ultimately, this requires you to be honest with yourself and your priorities. Are you yearning for prestigious universities that have that strict hard cutoff? Or are you dedicated to caring for patients no matter the circumstance? However you answer, there are programs out there that cater to your stats. From a quick Quick scan on Google, I came across a site called MedEdits that gave a complete breakdown of averages as well as other information on specific programs. So based on their site, this is for allopathic or MD schools. The most recent data shows that the average GPA for medical school matriculants in the US in 2019 were as follows. Overall GPA of 3.72, a BCPM GPA or your science because that's biology, chemistry, physics, and math, 3.65, and a non science GPA of 3.8. This information for DO programs and Caribbean programs, their specific averages were found on ingeniousprep.com, which I'll also link in the description as well. In terms of osteopathic programs or DO programs, the average GPA is 3.54, while the average MCAT score is 503.8. I guess 504 if you were to round up because who gives MCAT scores like that? <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to talk about Caribbean options. The average GPA at Caribbean schools fluctuates between 3.2 and 3.3. The median MCAT is between 490 and 500. Keep in mind, these are averages, which means that people score above as well as below this set number. Maybe it's in their experience, their letters, their background, their story. So many factors play a role in an applicant's admission. So there unfortunately isn't a definitive answer or cut off. As for the MCAT, I suggest you focus that energy in trying to nail it that first try. Retakes aren't viewed in the most positive light, but they're more justified when there is significant improvement. If you were curious about your specific program, MSAR, or the medical school admissions requirement, list the median MCAT scores as well as GPA of applicants, but I suggest to focus on the median scores of matriculants, the people who actually start going to school there, which again are only one aspect of your medical school application. So like I've said throughout this video, I'm not qualified to review someone's stats and be the gatekeeper of yes, you shall pass or not. But if you are curious and need a little bit more guidance, I've heard about these online, which I personally didn't use, but I've definitely heard about them when other students talked about their experiences on Student Doctor Network or Reddit. These sites can rudimentally gauge where you fall in terms of stats. Lizzie M or the Lizzie M score, where you input your stats, GPA, MCAT, which state you'd be considered in state, as well as rating your extracurriculars in order to spit out a score and school list that caters to that score. I've also seen a lot on Student Doctor Network and Reddit people sharing their stats and extracurriculars and eventually what they signed as their school list and their application cycle results. As stats are more set in stone, choosing your extracurriculars and constructing your story is where you have control for your medical school application. I recommend choosing one to two activities that you are passionate about to deep dive in terms of commitment and leadership. Ultimately, what you're striving to show is how you created impact in the activities that you cared about most. People say that there's a pre-med checklist before applying to medical school, and as much as I'd like to debunk that, there is some truth to that statement. I'm not saying to just do things just to look good. As a quick skim, the checklist 
just include having some research experience, whether that's in clinical, translational, or basic science research, shadowing a doctor, volunteer work, any involvement within the community, and a solid baseline of good grades and standardized scores. This shows you have the tenacity to undergo the rigors of medical school. This checklist indicates that you're getting crucial experience to understand what being a doctor entails. And it is a way for AdCom to know this person has a level of understanding of the many tenets that constitute medicine, such as clinical duties, interpersonal skills, research in academia, and whether you enjoy patient care. Going back to choosing your involvements, where you have the most control, where you dedicate your energy, and how this melts your story of why medicine. Randomly running with whatever falls into your lap can be kind of confusing and make it harder for you to truly immerse yourself in that activity if you're not wholly passionate about it. So sit down, take out pen and paper, and ask yourself, what do you care about? What interests you? From there, what steps do you need to take to get started? And if that's kind of an ambiguous stream of questions, you can first start by identifying three to four characteristics present in medicine that mean a lot to you. From there, choose activities that incorporate those characteristics in line with your theme in pursuing medicine. As a personal example, my pillars were culture, community, and empowerment through education. Even if something didn't seem to relate to medicine, I didn't forbid myself from doing those activities within reason and balance because I'm human and I thrive off of hobbies, interests, and passions. If you're curious about the activities that I personally chose, feel free to check out this video outlining my work and activities section in constructing my story. Now that you got your activities in check, it's time to construct your application. The main questions I'd have at the forefront of my mind, how does my application read and what can I do to maximize its potential? I had a lot of people message me about concerns about their GPA. My advice for this section, if you are addressing your GPA, show how you overcame the obstacle, what you learned from that experience and how you're carrying that through to improve your study habits. I would also suggest to never blame any external situation. Really show how you move past that and are now thriving. At the end of the day, an upward trend shows promise and a continual effort to improve. As mentioned in all my application videos, emphasizing your story is so, so, so important. And where you can really reiterate that are these sections in particular. Your work and activities, personal statement, and even your letter of recommendations, having other people attest to your story. Once you spend time making sure these sections best reflect you, make sure that every writing technicality, grammar, structure, presentation is on point. Everything is spelled and punctuated correctly and things flow fluently. People look over the personal statement ample times. Do not neglect your work and activity sections, especially since AdCom will see that section before your personal statement. This is embarrassing, but for example, in my work and activity section, I actually spelled the word medicine incorrectly and I listed the incorrect date for my graduation because apparently I am not careful. In line with being polished, please give your application the utmost time and attention it deserves. Not to just proceed through the sections as, oh no, let's just get it done. You truly can I was gonna say taste. You truly can read the difference between someone who put TLC in something versus not. What I mean by that is writing the sections, but also in putting courses, just to make sure you do it correctly with your transcript at hand. If you list anything incorrectly, that would actually hold you up in the verification process. Make sure that it's done correctly the first time. I've also had a lot of questions about this too. People kind of concerned about their stats wanting to send in things earlier just to compensate, but I personally believe do not compromise the quality of your application for speed. Yes, even though the application is based on a rolling basis, one to two weeks, in my opinion, doesn't make drastic difference. Give yourself the time you need to refine your app and make sure it hits home Harder. So that concludes everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. I super hope that it brought value to you in any way. It's scary to feel that you're shooting an arrow in the dark, but just remember if you put in the hard work, the reps, if you will, of good habits, discipline, and gratitude, you'll succeed wherever you're planted. So even when your vision gets a little bit blurred from the long nights, the stress, and moments of uncertainty, remember that you're working towards being the best doctor you can be for your future patients. Keep trekking along and try your best to not forget why. But yes, TED Talks aside, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.